Again, I hope that you did enjoy that edition of today's Johnny's Buy from the studios of 92.73 FM from Johnny Hughes. Remember, we have cash out. It goes with a short code, star 439 hash. And uh, let me say good morning to a number of you as well, because, uh, well, wherever you're watching us from, we're grateful that you're joining us. Chairman Prosper, good morning to you, wherever you are. Please know that we're encouraging you to also cash out with us with a short code star 439 hash. With star 439 hash, you have to choose option two. And so with the USD dashboard, you, after choosing option two, which is TV3, you will also see the options given to you to choose the number of tickets. So choose as many tickets as you can. It enables you to be in a great position to get your winning increased subsequently. Again, let me say a speedy recovery to you. Abigail Dakum with the Ghana National Association of Teachers, the Goma District. Uh, a bit under the weather. I wish you all the best, my sister. And uh, hopefully uh, everything will be fine as ordained by God. Chief Mante in Akosombo. Uh, Vivian as well, the wife. I wish you all the best. But please, make sure you share our stream. Today, we're here to talk about the launch of the manifesto by John Dramani Mahama and the rest of uh, the leadership of the NDC. It took place on the campus of the University of Education when it by and the next day which was just yesterday evening we have we had dr mahmoud Baumia, the presidential candidate of the mpp and vice president of our country also encountering or meeting the press and taking questions we're here to assess the two events but more so into detail what needs to be done subsequently good morning to you wherever you're watching us from let me say uh, a couple of you who are already on our stream please make sure you share the stream and uh, we had advertised earlier that Andrew Japamesa will be here, but apparently there was a mix-up in the communication. So we're going to have uh, Mr. Haruna, who also is a Deputy General Secretary of the MPP, also join us subsequently. When he's in, we'll do the introduction. But right now, let me just um, uh, also um, introduce to you Yao Bwabing Asamwa. Uh, he's no novice in Ghana's politics and our governance system. Yao Bwabing Asamwa is a legal... Uh, practitioner by profession, also a transparency and, uh, and governance expert in his own right. Uh, good morning to you, Bobby and Sabah. Good morning, Bye, sir. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? We also have Edu Jitamaklu. Edu Jitamaklu, legal oh, practitioner as well. He's here. He was uh, that manifesto launch. Good morning to you. Good morning, Roland. Good okay. morning to my learned senior. I thought you had added that he's a legal colossus. That would have ended the conversation. Yeah, but I, a quick, a quick I'm one. I'm here to say good morning. Yes, you. a, quick, a quick one. A quick one. <laughs> um, um, I have this junior of mine who helps me a lot, Patrick. Uh, today happens to be his birthday, a lawyer. He's I a lawyer? He, yeah. What's his full name? Um, uh, Azameti Patrick. Okay. So lawyer today, Patrick Azameti. And then my very good senior brother, Francis Polu. Toby, happy birthday. That's advertising. How much are you taking from him for one that? One CD, one CD. <laughs> I'll, I'll, pay, I'll pay in 200 years. Mm. You'll pay in 200 years. Yes. All right. So please make sure that mm. you share the stream for us. We'll be very much interested in what you uh, think as well. And so I have already joining us uh, Ni Udwe Yemo, who is on Facebook. Please make sure you share the stream. Uh, Mensa Majid, good morning. Yels, uh, Nelson Akotia. Money, money, money. People say, why do I keep mentioning your name? Good morning to Justice Mingle, who was my former boss at GBC as well. Uh, you're not on the stream, though, but uh, just want to say good morning to you. Ivan Sibin um, Samba. Kwesi Mensa watching us um, from the U.S. Kweku Aaron is also there as well. Please share the stream. Let's have some nice conversation. And um, also join us this morning. I have um, uh, Mr. Harina, and Harina is... Um, a Deputy General Secretary of the MPP. Thank you for joining us as well. It's been a while. Thank you. I, I monitored uh, the, the manifesto. Uh, was it the manifesto? No, it was uh, the press engagement. Quite yeah. enlightening. Yes. Yes. Uh, Very refreshing. All right. So let's give you some insights from John Dramani Mohammed's uh, speech at the University of Education Winneba launch of the party's manifesto, and then we'll come out and ask some critical questions. I want to put them to the test. Some of the things they are proposing, how do they intend to achieve them? We'll put in place a robust code of conduct and standards for all government officials in line with the principles of ethical leadership, modesty, 
humility, integrity, and accountability. We will nominate all our cabinet ministers for parliamentary approval within the first 14 days in office. We would have named all our cabinet ministers. We will constitute the leanest and most efficient government in the history of the Fourth Republic in the first 90 days in office. We will hold a national economic dialogue to discuss the true state of the economy and prepare a homegrown fiscal consolidation program to guide the budget. Number five, we will commence the drafting of needed legal amendments and preparation for the implementation of the 24-hour economy policy under the office of the president. Number six, we will establish a, a, an accelerated Export Development Council, which I will personally chair, to promote exports as part of a broader strategy for economic transformation. Number seven, we will convene a national consultative conference on education with CHAS, NAGRAT, NAT, CCT, NAPS, CETAG, Vice Chancellors Ghana, Prinkoff, Tewu, UTAG, PTAs, students, think tanks, academia, parents, and other stakeholders to build consensus on the improvement of our education sector, including the free SHS. Number eight, we'll scrap the following draconian taxes to alleviate hardship and ease the high cost of doing business in our first 90 days in office. One, e-levy. Two, COVID levy. Three, betting tax. Four, emissions levy. And so here we are. And uh, Edu um so some of the things are in terms of 24-hour economy, et cetera, it's... Um, receive some level of criticism from sections of the other side of the political divide and then also put to scrutiny by academia. What do you say to that? Okay, so um, Roland, uh, it's only fair. Good morning to my brother. I was expecting my senior, uh, my learned senior Japa, but he's not here for whatever reason. But I want to just thank the almighty God, the almighty Allah for making the Saturday program, a huge success. We went in, finished, came back, no problem. And we thank God for that. The traditional authorities who allowed us to use their land for the manifesto lunch. And I'm very confident that all our ancestors will be with us for victory come December 7, 2024. That said, if you listen to H.E. John Dramani Mahama, Beyond the 24-hour economy policy that he talked about, he had also, in a very clear term, laid out what you call his plan, programs, for the benefit of resetting the Ghanaian economy from the unbridled borrowing, the untold hardship that we have suffered in the past seven years, eight months. Now, what H. E. John Dramani Mahama is saying is what I would liken to how Europe looked like after Second World War, and that it has to take the then U.S. Secretary of State, George Marshall, to come out with the economic recovery plan that by 1950, most of Europe has started recovery. That is the kind of strategy, plan, programs that H. E. John Dramani Mahama is coming We're with. already before the IMF. That's a recovery plan. Now, you notice that the IMF program that we entered into, the most recent one, we went to the IMF at the point where we had got into emergency situation. So that's a different conversation altogether. But the point I'm making is that when you have an economy that we are seeing currently, you need a robust recovery plan. Now, H.E. John Dramani Mahama intend to do this by first. And, and one thing about what happened on Saturday is that he gives you timeline. The essence of timeline is to ensure accountability. 
so you can hold him accountable to his words. And so he says that within the first 90 days, within the first 120 days, this is what you know, I he will gives do. specific timelines. Timelines. He wants you to hold him account. The people who do not want accountability do not want to set time for themselves. So that after seven years, they'll come and tell you that we are building, we are doing this. No. He says, I'm giving myself this timeline. Now, he says that I am going to summon an economic consultative process immediately. As somebody would say, immediately at once. And the essence of that is to harvest the numerous talents, minds that Ghanaians have. There's one thing about John Dramani Mahama, beyond his credibility, the fact that he's trustworthy, is also the issue that he does not come across as knowing it all. The Kukua Nancy behavior, no. He believes that bringing all of us together is good for us to harness talent, to manage this economy for all and not a few. That's important. The other thing too is that when it comes to the 24-hour economy policy program, we believe that it's going to be the strongest catalyst. <laughs> and he says it's going to be under his direct supervision. Very important. The other issue, and I want to name this one, the free university, the free university academic fees for first time, a first year student. Very key. And when so we, meanwhile, they're not going to pay academic user facility fees? No. Academic fees is different from academic user. That one is just a small component. Okay. So once you are given your 2,000 cities to pay, government of Ghana is going to give that money to the student loan trust to give to the universities as grants. As grants. Complete. Done. And that's it. And we are saying that we do not also want to affect the, the university's ability to do what they call internally generated funds we will not undermine that at all. The other thing that I want all of us to look at is that, look, in every household, you have a mother who is an entrepreneur. But capital formation and acquiring capital by women is extremely difficult. Because mostly, the people who have the collateral tend to be the men in the, in the family. So we are coming out with the Women National Development Bank. And the essence of this bank is to ensure that women get the needed facility. In fact, National you, Women's Development Bank. Yes. If you look at our population structure, women top the highest. Meanwhile, in terms of economic empowerment, they suffer. So this is a tailor-made program for our women. Then the issue of leveraging on technology the one million codex program. If you look at our 2020 manifesto, it featured prominently. I noticed that the MPP, for the first time in their manifesto this time, have decided to copy what we did. But that's fine. We do not, we believe in sharing well, ideas. Well, I'll ask Arina whether that's true. So that's perfectly <laughs> okay for us. Now, he's also said that within that 120 days, this number of taxes are going to be what? Scrapped. Abolished. No Libi Libi, no Laba Laba. One, E Levy. And if you recall, as early as April 2022, at Kempis, H. John Dramani Mahama made a promise that I am going to abolish the obnoxious E Levy that Akufuado and Baumia introduced against all resistance. They said, no, we will do it. Whether you like it or not, we will introduce e levy. John Mahama is going to abolish it too. The betting tax, he is going to abolish it. Very, very important tax that we need to abolish. In fact, when I speak to the investors out there, I call them investors. They will tell you. Who are the investors? The betters. Okay. The, the patrons. Yes. They are called investors. And they will tell you that they do not understand why Akufado had failed to provide them jobs. He had failed to provide them opportunities. And the little money they get from their bed, he wants to take 10% out of it. The other thing is the obnoxious COVID-19 levy. Do you know that today, 
Effectively, effectively, VAT is now 21%. In fact, if you do the input uh, output uh, 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 VAT, it's almost 22%. Now, if for restaurants and hotels, if you even add the uh, tourism levy, that's almost 23%. These things are killing businesses slowly Edigi, and That's quietly. a key consideration. And, and, so, and, and I did ask some questions of mm, some economists because mm, at the end of the day, you've gone to the IMF and this part is going to transition if the NDC should win or not, or if it's the same um, MPP government being Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, where you, you have come into some arrangements with the Bretton Wood Institution based on what your projections are on revenue collection. Now, you say that you are taking these revenues off. What are going to be the substitutions or what are the trade-offs? Okay, so, so you part? must always understand that an IMA program is not casting iron. Okay. The IMA programs are always subject to review. And so, you can always speak to the IMF. And you see, they are interested in protecting their investment. But they do not also want you to suffer <clears throat> issues relative to governance. <clears throat> and so, it's a matter of sitting down. The only challenge is that this particular IMF program was negotiated at the time where the economy had collapsed. So the terms are onerous. That is significantly different from many of the IMF so there could be variations. Absolutely. Right. And these are people who understand. Mr. So Mr. Just, just, just to wrap up on I'll it. give you 30 so, seconds yeah. on that. So H.E. John Dramani Mahama is talking about immediate economic recovery. Now what is also key is the question of accountability. The pervasive corruption. The maladministration. The PDS. The spare parts, the ambulance spare parts, where the president's direct family member and son-in-law gets over $34 million contract. Now, do you know that the city equivalent of that $34 million, okay, is enough to pay the first year fees? Do you know that? Today, we are saddled to pay almost $130-something million to a company called Trafigura for that obnoxious termination of the GPGC contract. That money alone is over one point something billion. So you're talking about prosecutions actually. <coughs> Beyond that, All right. recovery. Let and me, that is where John Mahama is coming out with the oral operation recover all looted assets. Okay. That is oral is what operation recover, recover all, looted all assets. loots. Um, Mr. Mohammed, uh, at the end of the day, um, you also have brought your your manifesto and uh, of course Many of these outline policy propositions were even espoused by the vice president during the press encounter yesterday. Um, th th that means that it's, it's almost a given, right? Um, the policy propositions of the NDC supersede the MPP. Is that, is that a question that is fair to ask? Um, thank you very much, Roland. I first and foremost will say good morning to your cherished viewers out there and my co-panelists, especially my former boss, Yabo Um We are very grateful to um, have come back to um, have discussions here, and we expect that we would have fair reportage, balance, uh, uh, journalism, in terms of how... Uh, if you don't want to appear on TV3, get up and walk out. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? you see, who who deserves fair reportage? If you, what you, you are doing you is have, right, you get... You have, <laughs> you have led us in this game, and this has been... What do you mean has led you in this game. game? He was my director. I was a deputy uh, director of communications okay. when, so, he was, when he was okay, a director. So he was your deputy when he was in the MPP? No, he was my boss when I was a deputy. Okay, so you yes. were his deputy? Yes, okay. and he always, what? he always, Make sure that we should have accurate okay. reportage. And, and, and he knows the tenets of Mr. Mr. Uh, Haruna Mohammed. Let me state here categorically mm -hmm. that there's no way Media General, as well as its relevant subsidiaries, as you all know, is unfair, is non objective. I don't expect you to say you it's, are, you it, are unfair. It's non objective and it's unethical in its dealings in any way. I've practiced I, journalism I, I, for I 23 don't, years, I don't years as a professional. I don't expect you. Adding to... my internship, etc., 24 years. I don't there's expect no you. way I will say that I've. I have been unethical 
If that is your opinion, that is fair. And I think that's 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 your opinion. And I and I don't expect you to agree with me. Let me talk. And I think that you came here because we all need to have a fair discussion. And, and that's why I'm calling for the fair discussion. And as a reputable media entity, if not the leading or one of the leading entities right here in our republic, transcending even our borders, we have been able to couch that credibility to say that being fair, being ethical, is what we do. And cross-checking facts, fact-checking, is something we've always done. You can see the plethora of individuals that we have churned out in the media landscape right here in Ghana. And so for you to say that you expect fairness, ethics, and then also objectivity, that will be your view. It can never be that based on the standards and values that Media General stands for, we have been unfair, unethical. And is that the reason why you didn't have give me an invitation you, yesterday? Have you finished? I've finished. Please right. continue. That is your opinion. I repeat, we expect fairness. We, we expect accurate reportage. And you will get it. Pure. We've always that done so that you've, to you. You've expressed your opinion. We've called for what we want. And have that's exactly why. Have they exactly apologized for Please coming back? Have they apologized for coming back? Oh, they, 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 they have issued a statement to us. They have given us a letter. Okay, you go. And I'm not here to make it public, you but go. they have. You we go. have instances that you have aired and you have to apologize. So I am telling you that we need accurate reportage, fair journalism. We are always so. fair, accurate and in journalism, what we do is to make sure we are credible. Please go ahead. Let's work towards that so that you will be more credible. Um, mm -hmm. Yesterday was a very good day. Uh, I want to use this opportunity to thank His Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic, and the flag bearer of the New Patriotic Party for the 2024 general elections. Um, I have listened to my brother from the NDC I want to congratulate them for their uh, uh, manifesto launch, that's the copy festo. Um, we have been able to launch our manifesto ahead of them. And I am surprised that we can copy from what is not being launched. Um, that is a very great indictment on the committee that held or that put together the, the manifesto. You are insulting the intelligence of the committee that they have leaked your manifesto. And that is exactly what he's trying to tell us. <laughs> we don't have that laxity of time to copy people. We are a party that believes in our own uh, uh, values and what have you. And that is why we have made our manifesto uh, very open, very clear ahead of them. For them to look at it and copy as usual. Uh, because that has been the standard they have set for themselves. Um, I am very surprised. Surprise at what? That a former president of the Republic of Ghana would go to speak at a manifesto launch and would not cross-check facts, come to speak of matters that has been appropriately handled in Parliament, bills that have been amended, sections of things that he has brought out is non-existent, Common emission levy, myself and you here knows that there is no any emission levy currently running against the state. There is no any emission, nobody pays for emission levy. Why do you abolish? How are you going to abolish something that is not in existence? Roland, you are aware that there is no emission levy. So why, what, what is he going to abolish? Did the government of Danado Danko Kufuado, as well as Rahman Maudu Bamiya, try to bring... Not tried. Or, he, he kept it or, in the law. Or, or, int or introduced an emission tax. He kept it in I'm the law. I'm asking you a question. I'm you, telling you. you but I'm, te I'm telling you that there is no such tax. Is there? So why are you going to abolish something that does not exist? Was the effort? I am saying, uh, is it the effort he's abolishing or he's abolishing what is in existence? Was there the effort? Is it an effort is abolishing? Roland, he's, he, you should be abolishing what is in existence. So you don't go there and talk about something that does not exist that he say you are going to abolish. It. How do you abolish something that does not exist? He's talking about 24-hour economy. What about it? 
24-hour economy is not a policy. It's not. It has to be strung on some building blocks. I've worked in the public service for close to 20 years. You have done what? I've worked in the public service for close to 20 years. I've worked in business development services. I've been a business advisor. I've been a trainer motivator. And I know when we talk about running an economy. Nothing new, nothing innovative, nothing creative. Same old wine in the same bottle. Nothing to achieve. Very empty. Let me tell you. He's talking about betting tax. That lands a credibility on their own minority leader who seeks to justify betting tax. His own minority leader, up to today, still stands on the fact that people should be taxed by betting. We have put together a complete strategy, a bold solution to tackle this particular angle. I don't understand. That is you. going You're to... saying the minority leader has now... He supported, he clearly supported and indicated that be taxing... Is be your presidential candidate... No, but he's the minority leader. I'm just saying it's is an your indictment. Is your it's presidential candidate not also announcing in the manifesto that betting tax will be abolished? No, I'm just saying that whilst he's saying that, He's casting an indictment on his minority leader. And that is a fact. If you want, you can cross-check me. I it's a you, fact. I, I ask a question. Did, is your candidate, Dr. Mahmoud Obama, the vice president, the head of the economic management team of Ghana, uh -huh. is he not proposing that if elected into office, he will abolish the I am the saying tax? that what he said is an indictment on his own minority leader. It's a fact. Right? Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is putting together a bold solution in order to be able to tackle all these tax amnesties that he is he's Including ab abol ab abolishing of the betting tax, right? It's not just even ab ab abolishing that. It's even just complete takeaway because of the policy that he's bringing. One, we are looking at setting aside a component of a percentage that's about three percent contribution to GDP, and that's about thirty thousand, uh, thirty million dollars, uh, uh, Ghana cities, thirty billion Ghana cities. That's when we are able to implement these policies that, that we are putting together. The revenue accumulation, that the contribution to GDP of three percent, e levy, betting tax and other levies that we have mentioned cannot contribute even up to 1%. So if we are able to implement this policy and make sure that this 3% contribution to GDP, then there is no necessity for these taxes to even remain on our books. We're going to leverage resources to the private sector. The private sector will be supported, will be given the enabling environment to be supported, to be able to take up development drive within the state of governance. With improved tax regimes. With improved tax amnesty and tax regimes where private sector will have the opportunity to strive and to help government. And government will channel the other resources that would have been used in that particular sector to create jobs and to create wealth. And in that instance, these taxes that we have, that His Excellency the Vice President is talking about, saying he's going to abolish them, would not be necessary because the contribution, the revenue contribution of these taxes cannot amount to the three percentage point Mr. to the Mohammed, GDP. Is the Vice President still the head of the economic management team? He is the head of the so economic why management is it that team. So if he sits as head of the economic management team, these propositions, he can propose them not only as head of the are economic you, management team. Are you still the host of TV3 morning show, the new day? 
Is it not obvious? No, yes, it's so it's obvious. So that, that's why I'm also asking. It's obvious he's the so chairman of the... I said, I, and I'm, I will, I'm, say, I'm also asking you. So why is is that, it I'll, all I'll proposals that you something. have given to your producer? So why, why, why is it that I'll say that I'll do something when I become the substantial host, when I'm already the host? Because I that's am, the analogy he's not. Doing. He's not the host. If you check, if you check the governance system, the vice president is not the person that is leading the church. You know it. There is no constitutional backing to economic management team. He is a lawyer. He knows that. My senior here knows it. There is, there is, there is no, there is no, there is no constitutional backing. He said, I did this, I did that. Yeah, he championed the implementation of number of things. It is true, and you know it, that he championed the introduction of the drone system. Even their national women organizer. So, so it's his. He championed. Yes, he so made he that suggestion. Mohammed. And that's why I'm saying you did the suggestions that you make to your producer. Mm. It's not everything that they take. Is it not true? Is he the head of the economic management? He is. It, there's a specific question. Is he the head of the economic he management? He is the head of the economic management okay. team. So, so does he support betting tax now? Does he support? The betting tax that is in place. Does he support it now? The point is that they sit in cabinet. Cabinet takes decisions, and when cabinet takes decision, it is bound on each member in cabinet. Are you saying that he opposed it at the economic? Did I say here? Level? I said cabinet decisions are bound. So you cannot Mr. ask Arana, whether I'm he supports. you specific questions. I am. I am answering so then, so you. I'm uh, answering you so with I'm, a specific I'm, I'm, answer. And I'm asking you specific questions. So let's be realistic with each other. I am very re realistic. Okay. I'm very is realistic. Is Dr. Mahmoud Dubamia still the head of the economic manager? He is the head of the economic manager. Is manager. it true? That when it comes to taxes and tax handles, they are discussed at meetings of the economic management team? Economic management team make proposals to cab cabinet. They don't take decisions. So by, by so saying, betting tax was one of the tax handles that were discussed before the economic management team, true? Betting tax is one of the taxes that is being put and captured in the budget and approved by parliament. And this has been discussed at cabinet and agreed. And cabinet has sanctioned. You haven't answered my question. I've answered you. I, what? I'll, you cannot tell I'll me I'll how I'm going to question. answer your question. I will really? pose the question again. Yeah, post it. I will give you an answer. The economic management team discussed tax handles. Was the betting tax one of them? The betting tax is on the budget of Ghana, approved by parliament. Are you saying that handles in the budget are not discussed at the economic management I am team. telling you that economic management team makes suggestions to cabinet and cabinet takes the decision was betting tax one of the suggestions made you know betting tax is on the budget of the republic of ghana you know <laughs> if it is not decided at cabinet in other words cannot. dr maudu baumia approves of the betting tax now even Baumdu parliament approved the even parliament approved the betting tax even the parliament of ghana approved the betting tax and Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is a citizen of Ghana, and he participates in the governance system and cannot say that he does not agree with. But he can't say, given the opportunity as an individual, I will do it differently. And this is why he is bringing out his policies. So what, he takes, he's going he to takes do credit it. for everything good, but takes uh, he takes credit he, for things he but suggests. But doesn't take credit for everything bad. There is, there, he takes credit for issues he proposed and agreed. Did he propose the betting tax? He did not propose betting tax. Was it discussed at the economic management team? Ah, you, what, what answer do you need again? All right. A betting tax that is being discussed in right. cabinet, approved by Parliament of Ghana. You are asking me whether they yeah, discuss that. Uh, incidentally, but seemed, let me correct this. He, me, he seemed to have fingered you in, in all this discussion. He said you were his boss. He was your deputy. And so <laughs> you were all in a line. I was his deputy. Okay. He said you were his boss, he was your deputy. So you were all in alignment. Now you are with the great transformational uh, plan producers. That is movement for change. What do you think is at variance by way of the discussion by the propositions in the manifestos as we take a look at it now? Especially when it well, comes to tax <coughs> and it's being piled on the ordinary Ghanaian. Let me, <coughs> let me greet the people of Ghana. Should I bring you some water so you clear your throat? Ah, it's water? fine. After okay. listening to those two, I'll clear okay. my throat. <laughs> but, but clearly, clearly, Ghanaians who are going to vote for the future of this country in less than three months must advise themselves from the sickness that these two manifestos are actually going to continue to project. Listen to the two. 
already they are at extreme opposites, yeah. which means what we need, the economic governance reforms and the governance, political governance reforms that are required to bring us together around the national plan is already missing. Which they, is are set, they are setting up, up for more debt. And I'll give you just one example. Hospital. I don't understand. Hospital infrastructure. Alan saying if he leads the government, come 2020, you will not borrow. I'm saying these two are setting us up for more debt. That's the same thing. Dr. Mahmoud Mahmoud said, I'm, and I'm he's, he will be borrowed. You, I'm going to give you a specific example. I'm not talking about borrowing yet. I will talk about borrowing. I'm not talking about. I'm talking about the kinds of project postures that they take because of partisanship that lead us deeper into debt. That's what I want to talk about. Hospital projects. Read the NDC manifesto. Read the MPP manifesto. MPP is talking about Agenda 111. NDC is talking about a specific list of hospitals it wants to rehab. <laughs> it means that assuming NDC comes into authority, these projects that recently the president has started, Agenda 111, the new roads that are being constructed and otherwise, we may find will be abandoned. <laughs> the, 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 the projects that the MPP has started. Who told you that? You asked, because, did because, you ask John Mahama and he said that he's going to abandon I think publicly but, but, he has but, stated but, that but, he's but, going but, to continue. Look specifically, them. Let's be on the straight and narrow. Look specifically, uh, yeah, yeah, Mr. Yawabi, answer, hospital, the hospital He has categorically site. said publicly that he's going to continue such projects. So Whether now, he, he continues so it, now, if he's elected or not, that's another well, matter. Very Please. well. So now, what I'm saying is that these two manifestos, don't deal with the sickness that we have. They are still borrow and spend manifestos. They are still looking at consolidating public sector debt with more borrowing from the World Bank and other sources. They don't have any solutions to accumulating capital. The GTP knows that the problem of this country is transformation of the economy and it depends on accumulation of local capital and the restructuring of our governance structure in certain ways so quickly two or three things one if you want to accumulate local capital you must deal decisively with interest rates local businesses cannot continue to borrow above 30 percent and become competitive because in one year there's no work you do that you'll be able to pay off your interest of 30 percent and tackle your principal. what's your proposition so our proposition is that we are going to lower interest rates below into single digits we are going for to all lower. businesses or some for businesses. all businesses businesses will borrow at single digit because that is the only way they can be competitive beyond that we are going to have open banking which means that businesses can move their monies back and forth without struggle we are going to leverage a new wealth fund the wealth fund will bring together all the existing capital funds that we are trying to build individually and separately into one consolidated wealth fund which will be listed on the ghana stock exchange and will be leveraged will be leveraged to build capital we are going to expand the Ghana Stock Exchange by offloading the 30% SOE sector. The SOE sector that is scaling government finances, 30% of public accounts that don't are not accounted for or brought into the public accounts effectively. We are going to offload it onto the stock exchange. But the interesting thing is that we are going to have employee shareholding schemes. So instead of selling five, six hotels to a politically exposed person, an individual, you give out the shares. Employee shareholding schemes. schemes run through the stock exchange. You are building Ghanaian capital. You are building an inclusive economy. Okay? We are going to cancel social sourcing. I don't understand. Social sourcing. Social sourcing. Uh, uh, under the have you, you are a lawyer. Have you read hmm. the Public uh, Procurement Act? Yeah. Social sourcing under specific terms, and we have the benchmarks in there, is allowed by the Public Procurement Act. Listen to so what are you saying? Listen to a document sent to the World Bank. In 2014, let me see by the NDC economic and financial let me policies let me, let me see. for the medium term. Then you read it yourself. See, they go to page 22 let, uh, and read paragraph 97. Page 22, paragraph what? 97. But read the cover to satisfy yourself. It says authentic economic document. and financial policies for medium term prepared by the government of Ghana. 
2014. That's this uh, is John Mahama. Certainly. Read paragraph 97. Okay. Nothing. Noting that most fraud and corruption occurs in the award and execution of government funded contracts, government will publish guidelines on preventing and combating fraud and corruption in government contracts. These guidelines shall be annexed to all public tender documents and associated contracts, both at the national and decentralized levels, and shall be on the basis of any sanction if fraud or corruption is detected. Should be we don't obligation? have enough time. This is 2014. They are still... Mm. So, there. what's your point with this? The point of, if I have speaking for 15 minutes, I just started, you want me to wrap up. Yeah, you have what's three going minutes, on here? <laughs> What's going on here? The point I'm making is that they have nothing new to offer. 2014, we were talking about doing anti-corruption this way. And we still have the same public procurement approach. We still have the same opportunities for public procurements. We still have excessive public procurement in the promises that they have made. Where it appears government is positioning itself to continue to share contracts and try and build wealth. So we are saying that wealth building is a private sector thing. And I have given you the structures that we are going to use. When you come to the governance side, in corruption... And I started by telling you that we are going to abolish sole sourcing. We are going to use the public procurement law constructively and inclusively to bring Ghanaians on board by doing procurements through preferential arrangements with business associations in Ghana, across board, so that it is inclusive. We are not going to hide in rooms and give out contracts to individuals. That is what we are going to do. Our Anti-corruption agenda will bring incumbency accountability because we are going to bring together all the rules, scattered rules in different institutions into one law, beef up the law to include all the uh, issues of cronism, nepotism, conflict of interest, uh, uh, influence peddling and all those things, invest it in one institution with constitutional authority because we are going to review the constitutional mandate of the Attorney General, take away the anti-corruption part of prosecutions, invest it in an anti-corruption czar within the constitution and leave the rest so of the So there's going to be an ombudsman, separate. It's not an ombudsman, it's an anti-corruption czar. Ombudsman implies uh, we, already, uh, we already have rights. the OSP. Yes, we are going to get rid of the OSP because this is stronger than the OSP. The OSP has delegated authority from the Attorney General. Mm. The look, czar look is going to have it. constitutional authority, completely separate, completely independent, and that person will have the right to initiate, right. prosecute, and do everything. So our anti-corruption agenda is resolute and robust. Now, you go to the Traders Bank, which both sides have copied. Our Traders Bank... Who has copied what? Oh, the NDC is talking about the Women's International Bank after we said Traders Bank. The ABP is talking about the SME Bank. Yes. The bank we it are talking about... It cannot be a copy. About, it is a copy. The bank we are talking about, and I want to explain it today, is going to be for the traders in the sense that government is going to facilitate the setup but the traders are going to direct their deposits in the way they manage themselves with susu and other self-help schemes mm. so the bank will operate on the basis of very very low interest rates extremely low interest rates that will support the traders even where they have volatility in the market because, <laughs> because, because, are because, because the traders are already their managing their volatilities and, and, the traders and, and, look the traders are not getting loans from former banks. How are they floating? They are floating because they have self-financing schemes, but those schemes are vulnerable because they are not formalized. We are going to formalize those self-financing schemes in the traders' bank. So the government facilitates the traders who run their own bank, not in the sense of they being the managers, but in the sense of the terms and conditions being favorable.